Once the sides are assembled, as they are, it's time to start working on the soundboard. So I've run the spruce through my thickness sander, gotten it down to about a hundred and thirty thousandths of an inch, just over an eighth. And I need to join the two halves together. In order to do that, I have to get a straight edge on both so the seam is nice and tight. So I've got just some some plywood down here on the bench and another piece of particle board that I've clamped the spruce to. And now I will run this plane across the seam, or what will become the seam. Do that a couple times. Switch to the other half of the top and do the same thing. You still see just the tiniest gap down at the bottom of the seam. So I will run the pieces through the uh, shooting board a couple more times and just keep doing it until that gap goes away. Well, after a couple more passes with the plane, the seam is perfect. So now I'm ready to glue it together, glue the two halves together. Um, the seam is so good that I have to actually stagger the edges of the two pieces a little bit. Otherwise, I won't be able to see where that seam is. So little bit of tight bond. I'm going to glue all the, the top braces with hide glue, but I do like to use tight bond to join the center seam. Alright, so now I've got a little notch at both ends so I can see where the seam is. And by pushing these wedges against each other. I'm exerting pressure on the middle or on the on the joint. And because of the squeezing from the wedges, the wood is trying to pop up. So I will weight that down. wedges, another tap. And there we go. I can see little beads of glue um, popping up along the seam. So that tells me I've got a nice tight fit. So I'll let that sit probably till tomorrow, and then start actually building the soundboard. The glue dried, the seam looks great, so I sanded the top down to about a hundred and ten thousandths, traced the outline, and marked where the four inch diameter sound hole will be, and it's time to start making the rosette, the sound hole rings. This is going to be in three sections. The, the center part is a little wider than the two outer parts of rings. So I'm going to do the center first. That's going to be the most complicated part because it has abalone in it. So here goes. I drilled out the, the center of the sound hole and that's where everything will pivot from. I'll use my little Dremel router to route out the channels and then inlay the, the strips of plastic um, 
initially I won't put in the abalone. I'll use a spacer of Teflon, glue everything in, and then when the glue dries I can scrape down the plastic purfling lines and then insert the abalone. Got the channel cut and cleaned up. Here are the 11 pieces of black and cream colored celluloid binding plus the Teflon strip. That's this one. So now it's time to get all this stuff into the slot and then glue it up really tough handling all of these strips. They seem to want to pop out of the channel quite often. Big surprise. So I prefer to get the, the plastic in first. The celluloid plastic. This Teflon is technically a plastic too. And then, I'll just let that go, use my fingernail to open up between the two center pieces, and there it all goes, okay. This channel is only about 50 thousandths of an inch deep. have to make sure all of these strips are well seated in the channel because if they aren't, when I scrape them flush, I'm going to wind up scraping right through and then I'd have to start over. So now I'll glue that down with some cyanoacrylate and wait for it to dry. glue's dry, so now it's time to scrape this all flush with the top of the soundboard. That's close enough for now. I, I'm going to just leave the Teflon strip in here until I finish doing the inner and outer sets of rings and then I'll pull out the Teflon and put in the abalone. The tricky part with this inner set of rings is uh, the seam has to match up pretty cleanly. It'll probably be covered by the end of the fretboard or the abalone that's going across the end of the fretboard. But just in case it isn't, I need to, to make this as clean of a joint as possible. On the, the middle rings and the outer rings, there's no worry, it'll definitely be covered up by the end of the fretboard. There, that's pretty tight. So now I'll do the outer um, set of rings and then glue all that in.
side. This is scraped down. Um, there's just a little bit of residual glue, but that won't be a problem because once I put in the abalone, I will have to sand it a little bit and that'll take care of the glue residue. So now comes the fun part. Get to lay in the abalone pieces, which I, I bought from a supplier already cut. So, should fit right into the channel because the Teflon and the abalone are both 47 thousandths of an inch. Here we go. So I'll glue that in and sand it after the glue dries. Then the hole gets cut and I'm done with this. It's all been sanded and everything feels quite level. So the last thing to do is cut out the, the sound hole and then I can start working on braces. Another coaster 